In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to build your very own desktop D-Rock meter. Some people call it a Drock meter. In this video, I'll probably call it both. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and tap that little bell so you get notifications. Don't forget to jump in the comments and let me know what you think about this little project. If you decide to take it on and you've got questions, you know where to find me in the comments. All right, so let's get to this. We're going to jump into CAD first, and I'm going to show you how I designed the box for the unit itself, and then we'll get into the assembly. All right, so let's start out with the uh, CAD design. You can see here, I was lucky enough to find a couple step files to uh, use as models. So to put those step files in, basically put the step files in place where about where I wanted them. And then I built the structure around them. We can shut those off and you can see where is the drop here. Yeah, we'll shut it off. Okay. So there's the basic, I mean, it's a square box. That's pretty much what it is. So we'll shut the, uh, let's do bodies. Going to bodies, we'll shut number one body off, which is the big one. And this is just the base lid. And you can see it just extends down in there a little bit. And this creates that tight fit, kind of that press fit. And it is actually printing right now on the A1. So we should have that done in a moment. But as of yet, it is not done. Now, I thought I'd be a wise guy and try to do uh, a kind of print it like this. Or well, let me see if I can even orient it like that kind of print it on that orientation, just on this edge. And I'll show you a video of that. And uh, it printed, but this overhang was awful. And I just didn't like the gray. I didn't like the black components and the gray. So I ended up reprinting it in black PETG. And you'll see that in just a minute. So the first thing we've got to do is repurpose our old drock meter. I had three of these, so I decided to go ahead and steal the components out of an old one to use in the new one. So the first thing we've got to do is get the uh, wall socket and the drock meter out of the case. Now, previously, this was put in there with epoxy, and so it made it a little difficult to get it out. So now that I've pulled all the wires out, just a bit of aggression, and you know, it came right out. You'll see that later on I have a little bit of difficulty trying to get everything put back together because of that residual epoxy and because I did the um, you know, dimension so dead on to the drock meter that I had to make sure that I removed all the epoxy off the drock meter before it would work. And Kind of the same thing for the wall socket, too. You can see it's taking some effort, but we got it out. And I'll have to take some time to clean that up and get all the epoxy off of it. That way it will fit in the hole of the new box. Uh, in previous videos, my uh, power consumption video, I did uh, used one of these in a wall mount configuration. Now, I didn't want to do a wall mount. I wanted to do a desktop version, so that's what we're working with today. So I've got the meter, I've got my plug, and you see the tabs are cut off. This is from a previous build where we cut the tabs off and we just epoxied it in. Well, I wanted to reuse this, so basically what I did is I made the tolerances so tight that, you know, it's going to be a press fit. Um, I haven't made up a bottom for it yet, but I'm going to, I'll end up doing that, but yeah, so everything should be a pretty tight uh, press fit into place. should be pretty difficult to get into place, to be honest. And we'll see. I did one of these earlier, and I did it in gray. And, well, to be honest, I hated it. So, yeah, you can see everything just press fits into place. Now, obviously, if you think you're going to be a little aggressive with plugging stuff in, then maybe you'll want to uh, epoxy that in or something. But for the most part, I find out, I find that, you know, if I build those tolerances tight enough, everything kind of stays together pretty well. And then the, uh, the D-Rock meter is kind of the same way. You have to build your own pigtail on the green side. Now, logic would tell you green wires go to the green, but if you do that, you're going to burn your... <laughs> your D-Rock meter up. Ask me how I know. Um, but there is a diagram on the back. So if you did bother to actually 
pay attention to the diagram, you'd be fine. Now on these meters, you can see it looks like there's a little button right there that actually goes to the right. Make sure that goes to the right. So then feed that through the body of our case here. And like I said, this should be pretty tight. I'm not going to run it all the way in just yet. Um, in my cell loops. Give myself a little bit of rain to get some wiring done. So this is going to go over one of your leads. I, I run it over the white wire. Um, and then this will run to the switch as well as your pigtail for your power. So let's go ahead and start getting some stuff together. Like I said, everything is super tight, and that includes this pigtail coming through. Uh, pretty much did everything to the exact measurement, and then that makes it pretty, pretty tight. Pretty tight. All right, so here we go. Side by side Precision builds what we design Print by print We're redefining time Slicing the code is through the fire Muscles have feet the desire Polygons, both things conspire 3D print it higher and higher Heated bed where fish and slay Print shift, material sway FDM to waste away, blaze the way Tomorrow forged by resonant play Slicing the code is through the fire Nuzzles hot through the desire Polygons, morph dreams conspire 3D print it higher and higher All right, and that's pretty much it. Now we'll just put the receptacle in place. Press it into its spot. It is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've got that receptacle on top in place. We can go ahead and click the D-Rock meter all the way in. And now we're set. Push these wires in. I do have to do a bottom here, but I have a bottom. And you can see there is a desktop version of our D-Rock meter. So now I can plug something in here, and then the screen will show me how much current that particular item is using. And if all the lights go out, that means I did something wrong. And if it comes on, that means I did something right. So here we go, we see 123 volts, 0.1 amps. Uh, you can see this one has been used before, so it's got that running watt hour count on it. But all that information, and now if we plug something in up top here, it will actually measure all that information right on the screen for us. And that's a pretty simple setup. You do have to print a bottom piece for it. That way I can seal it off. But other than that, it is good to go. All right, guys, all done. As you can see, I even, I even put the bottom on it. I've tested it, working great. So this is ready. can be setting on my desk, and any time I need to know what device use how much power or you know how many amps it draws this is a quick way to find out obviously if you have any questions you can hit me up in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button and tap that little bell to get notifications the next time i upload a video we've definitely got some more stuff coming next week i've got an interesting story about a trailer in my truck might have had a little accident and how we're going to use 3D printing to fix that. Also, we reached out to some domestic manufacturers, and they're going to be sending us some products to review, and we can see if there's something we can use in our 3D print business 
in our current situation. All right, guys, later.